So last time we were visiting, we were working on the platform of the upper section of the deck. Um, so now this section is basically finished. We have a design element we're gonna walk through with the client with once we get the rest of the structure done. They're just gonna put a little angle on it to kind of mimic the pool. Um, it'll be nice, look for barbecue area. But basically what we've done is today we worked on the wheelchair accessibility ramp. So they have the platform there. That's what all these posts are in the background. We haven't lopped them off and finished that yet, but before we can finish our deck and our ramp, we really need to get this platform here finished. So right now we're laying on our landscape cloth. We've got a simple design. We're just using uh, building materials right off the shelf, 10 foot lumber, uh, 24 feet long, just a great big rectangle. We're gonna put a little bit of structural support underneath. So when it's done top and bottom, with a nice load transfer, get rid of the bounce. And then uh, we'll be able to line up for where our stairs and where our ramp ends. And uh, that should be just about it. And then we got a call for inspection. Here's the interesting thing. The city didn't want us to drill into the ground because if we went into the ground to put our piers, we had to have these 24 by 24 footings, five feet deep. It seemed excessive to dig out the entire backyard and then put all the dirt back again. So they said, well, because it's a wheelchair ramp, we'll let you do a floating deck. So when we weighed out the options, we had about a $40,000 excavation or floating deck. The clients agreed that the floating deck seemed a little bit more practical. So we're not sure why it was one extreme or the other. We kind of went from one ditch of crazy cost to the other ditch of, we'd all feel better having this in the ground, but because we're on clay, at the end of the day, we're not attaching to the house. So as long as it's a freestanding structure, being on the surface is okay with me if it's okay with the city. As my son alluded to earlier, basically what we're doing is we're making a giant wall, except we're not gonna lift it up into a wall. <laughs> we're gonna just leave it on the ground. Um, the trick here is, that's good, actually. The trick here is to just level it all off. So because we're working straight off of the deck, it's settled a little bit, we did some shimming, we have the, the rim joists there all taken care of. So here we're gonna have to use a deck block because we have some nice slope on the ground. Um, we're gonna use a two by eight on this side because that'll actually transfer the load a lot better over a larger gap. I think that'll work pretty good there, Nate. Let's give it a shot. A Little bit of trial and error here. We need to get the deck block in place the hole is on these two cross lines. Now, now let's see what we got. So that's perfect. <laughs> okay, down a little bit. And up a hair, stay there. Now that that's almost level, we're finding ourselves still a little bit high. So. That says I'm level. Okay, you can let it sit. So what we need is we have two of these boards. We're gonna use four deck blocks all the way across the back. All right, um, we could maybe get away with one here, but we wanna help get rid of some of the deflection and a huge flat surface. We don't ever have the ability to crawl underneath again <laughs> once we're done. So we gotta kinda overkill it from here. If you can grab the other deck blocks, we'll just finish leveling up all the way around the edge. Then we're ready to hang our joists. Yeah, I got a little carried away. So this is a little bit arduous and tedious. We just gotta try to get this laid out. We're gonna use joist hangers for everything. So if we can get this marked out, this would be awesome. Okay. So we need to be significantly higher. We're doing a, a ground level structure here. So now we've got an issue because the ground isn't flat. We can't just lay it on the ground. So over here at this point, um, instead of adding three or four bags of limestone screenings, we're gonna just use the post in the block. We attach a couple screws, now we've got a level structure. Now in order to finish this off, it's gonna be very much like the deck and the box beam structure. We'll drill a half inch hole. We've got some galvanized bolt and nut and washer assembly, and that'll transfer all the load that this is carrying into this post, through the block, through this, onto the clay, and now we're structurally solid. So just to reiterate, for all of you folks who are watching this video and haven't seen video number one in this series, this landscape cloth is a contractor grade. It's a 25, 30 year product. We overlap all of our seams four to five inches. We're gonna be covering up all of these seams in gravel just to help keep the promotion of anything foliage wise underneath from happening. Uh, we don't want plants growing through the deck and this is such a low laying deck that just about anything would grow through here. 
Uh, right now I'm just putting a bolt into this uh, 4x4, 2x8, just so we can get some concrete structure. You got much better at that since I saw you last. <laughs> Thank you. Practice makes perfect. So I just tighten this by hand and then I grab a wrench and then I just make sure that I take this washer and kind of seep it into this wood to make sure that it's not going anywhere. So when you're doing your structure and we're leveling things off, we're throwing a quick screw in. The screw is just there to set the wood until such time that you drill the hole and put in galvanized bolt. Screws are really brutal for structural strength. Their shear strength is almost non-existent. It's 50 to 70 pounds a screw. It's not that great. Um, so when you're building a structure like this, you, you generally use nails anywhere where it's got to hold weight from shearing off. So here, for instance, we, know we, we temporarily set a screw, then we use a bolt, but up top we're using screws because every piece of lumber here is overhanging structural lumber that's bolted into the 4x4. Nothing here is going to be bending. Anywhere where you're going to have bending, like with this platform here, You've got to use nails or structural screws, which is a totally different product, uh, which we're going to be using today. But uh, in most deck scenarios, you're going to use a nail gun and you want to use nail fasteners. But because of the box beam, this is one of the reasons why we did it. Anybody can use this at home. You don't need power equipment. You don't need an air gun, just a screw gun. But make sure that you have a box beam with galvanized bolts. That's your structure. You've got to have your joists overlapping that so that it carries the weight directly and you don't have to worry about which fastener you use. So right now, I'm just putting these joists in position, setting it with a screw. We're gonna actually attach the joist hangers after we're done setting all this up. Screws aren't gonna be the final thing carrying the load, so not to be concerned. But this is really fast, and then if we run into any problems, it's a lot easier to undo a couple of screws and move the joist package out of the way. There we go. Uh, right now, I'm just putting these, uh, what are these called again? Joist hangers. <laughs> joist hangers. I love it. <laughs> I'm putting these joist hangers uh, just on the top of the wood so when I go by and I screw them in, it's really easy just to go from here, flip them upside down, put the wood inside, and then screw them in simultaneously. It should be pretty quick and fast. And then that's it. Okay, tough guy. Now you've learned the hard way. Well, the weather's a lot better than it was the last couple of days, eh, Max? Maybe this will make up for my uh, mistakes last time on camera. These are the Simpson Strong Tie Structural Screw. So traditionally people have had this attitude, you gotta use nails. But Simpson came up with this screw version for this purpose. Uh, it's very strong steel. This stuff has a shear strength equivalent to the nail. But you can see by the speed that he's putting this in, just about anybody could install it. And it doesn't matter how good you are with a hammer. It was definitely, definitely not a shout out. <laughs> you missed your opportunity. That, that is coming on, that boat has sailed, man. So for more tips and tricks on how to renovate your home, make sure you subscribe to our channel at Ottawa Design and Build here on YouTube.